Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Police. Uh, no, uh, no, an ambulance. Uh, no, both. Uh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, a boy. A boy's been stabbed. Something happened? Just the disagreement, but I'll sort it now. Anywhere in particular you want to start? I'm not bothered. I spoke with Leo yesterday. He said a few things I think you'll find interesting. Yeah? Yeah. For one, he doesn't blame you for what happened. You're a victim in this too. He can think what he wants to think, but I'm not a victim in anything. I mean, I'm not saying what happened he deserved. Everyone knows when you're in the game. It's just like, yeah. He says now that he sees he was a victim even before he was hurt. He asked how you were doing. What did you tell him? I told him you were working through things too. That you were thinking about work, thinking about what you could do for work when you get out. I'm not being funny here, but like, I'd rather you not go around telling people my business. I don't tell Leo or anyone any details. But yes, you make a good point, I'm sorry. I want to help. But I don't want people chatting about my stuff, you know. I understand. I should let you know, though, that I'm going to be speaking with Grace tomorrow. Why are you speaking with her for? Well, her worker told her what I was doing and she said she wanted to help. Talk to her all you want, but she wasn't part of this really. I just want to say what I saw to stop it from happening to other kids around here. Kids like 10 or 11. Not only from the estates either, from good homes and villages. Even kids like Josh. I know he acts like the big man, but that's how they were all taught to act. Who by? Social media for one. Lads are always posting stuff about what they've done or who they've sparked out or something. And when they get together, they all brag about it. But when the older ones come around, they just keep quiet and do as they're told. There's a bunch of stories about what happens if you don't. What kinds of stories? People being put in the back of a van, taken to places, stripped naked. They'll burn them all over. They'll even threaten the families, talking about how they're gonna cut up their mom or baby sister or someone just close to them. They're proper dangerous. The boy who was stabbed, Leo, do you know if he was being threatened? I didn't really know him, but I'd seen him around. You could tell that he was scared of them. He had to do as he was told. He wasn't in control anymore. I had nothing. I didn't know what to do. I think they could tell that, you know, the olders. It was sick though when they seemed like interested in me and sort of gamey stuff just to be nice and shit. But yeah, I shouldn't have believed it. Any of it really, but you know, I was just kidding, kind of just dumb. You know, like thinking that he actually wanted me with him in the group, but that's how I did it with me anyway. Sort of made me feel like I was a part of something. I was dealing for him, like moving some bags, some, some cash. You know, I want like so daft handling drugs thinking, oh yeah, I wonder what this is, but everyone was doing it, so. It did feel wrong, it did feel dangerous. And I figured if I kept doing what I was told, like making money for him, then it'd be like more awards for me, you know? But yeah, it's all lies. They're acting like, yeah, we're just together, mate, but everyone was just stealing off each other. We're just waiting for someone to like stab you in the back. I mean, I know that for him, I don't, don't I? Were you ever robbed before that night? Yeah, I was fucking home after a pickle. But there were only like two people in the world who knew what I had on me and where I was going. But they, they were still waiting for me. And then they came ahead with a bat and all they said was like, you lost it, so now you owe me. That's how they set me up. I didn't have a choice, I, I had to keep working. Why did you feel you had no choice? Because well, I didn't. He said he had to work off what I owed him, or he'll tend to want to pet my bananas. And you know, after he said that, like, I knew what I'm missing. You know, after I got robbed, I was like, nah, that, that can't happen. But that's when I started carrying. Did it make you feel safer carrying a knife? Well, with their carrying, you got to, wouldn't you? 
in your own knife was used against you. In court, they did say that if you didn't have it on you, then you wouldn't have the injuries that you had. Well, maybe. And you say they, like they threatened you, but you didn't tell the police who they were. Why is that? Loyalty? Fear? No, I, no, I ain't that stupid. They aren't messed about. Because of what happened, I'm out of dealing, but you can never really actually be out of it. And they're still out there. I understand. Some of them have been convicted, though. Some of them? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. My mates call me Danny, but you can call me Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. Can you confirm for the recording that you're taking part in this research voluntarily? I can confirm that I'm doing this out of the goodness of my own heart, and that I'm willing to be a good and decent member of society for when I get out of here. Well, I am grateful. Your views will be helpful in helping us better understand the factors leading up to child criminal <laughs> exploitation. That's still the buzzword you all are using. I'll give you my views on child criminals. They all want to be gangsters. They all want to be the big man. Too much Snapchat, YouTube, Instagram, and whatever it is the kids are filling their heads with these days. They think the world owes them the money and respect. They don't think they have to earn it. I never knew my dad. And my mum used to work three jobs to feed me and my brother. And what does she get after doing all that? Dead at 45. I figured it's not just enough to work hard. You have to use your head. The world owes you nothing unless you get your stuff together. These kids are running around and watching me and wanting what I've got. Some of them are desperate for you to notice them. Others think they'll be the next big thing. But they all go around robbing in the same circle. They're going nowhere working for dealers. They just can't see it. And what do you see, Daniel, that they can't? That you can't rely on anyone to give you what you need. That you have to be in control of your own future. And are you? Am I what? In control of your own future. <laughs> and here's me thinking we're gonna have a nice friendly chat. I used to think, yeah, I wanted to be the big man. But there's always someone bigger than you. And then when you're in here, the stuff what happens that like you don't want no one knowing what's happened to you. Like, if I'm still inside when I'm 18, I'm gonna be mixing with the big blokes. And like, there's some right scary shit what goes on in there. Do you think it's wrong that you're on remand? Even though you were exploited? Nah. People keep saying that I was exploited. But it wasn't even like that. It's not like a dealer's waving 20 quid a year and saying, oh, go sell this when you don't know what you're doing. They know you need the money, and they get you doing stuff. I wasn't going to keep dealing for them, though. That's a mugs game. Why is that? Because you're only allowed to make so much money, considering all the stuff you have to do for it. There's no point getting stuff on Tick Ivory, because they'll always find a way to rip you off. I mean, for me, right, I've got off the streets, but you can make a lot more money in trap houses. What's it like in a trap house? Dirty. Disgusting. Stinks. Usually there's a smack and hanging about. You just got to be careful you don't sound like I use needle or something. There's people coming and going all the time. Sometimes it's from user's house and they have to feed that habit. Or sometimes it's random, like they're being threatened. All the guys there, sometimes for drugs, sometimes for something else. We've never had much around here, but it's never been this bad. They were coming and going at all hours. They were walking up, coming up on bikes, motorbikes. They was even pulling up in cars and taking young girls in there. I don't know what the parents thought they were doing at that time of night. I counted one day and there was over 50 people coming and going. I mean, you're not telling me there was oh, something illegal over there. But what can you do? I mean, you can't go out, can you? The trap house that Josh was dealing from, who took you there that night? My boyfriend. But Amy said I didn't have to talk about it. That's right, you don't have to tell me anything you don't want. Had you been there before? A few times, yeah. That's how I got to know Josh. 
Sometimes it was just me and him. Gracie's sound. I feel sorry for her though, like, what she has to put up with, what they do to her. What do they do to her? I'm not getting involved in that. She said he was a boyfriend. I think she really believes it. But I don't think he saw it like that. I wouldn't be getting my girlfriend high off her face and sharing it with my mates. It's wrong. Are you saying other men did sexual things to Grace? I'm not saying anything about that. The house Josh was dealing from. Why were you there? I was told to make a pick up. I did think it was a bit odd. Could be getting twitchy about someone waiting outside, like watching. Like, I didn't know if it was like gang or like another cop, but moved me around loads. Did you suspect anything when you got there? Well, I didn't. I didn't trust anyone anymore. But no, it just seemed normal. Well, and then there was a girl there though. But that was all. Uh, oh, and Josh when the other CI was there. He didn't seem happy about it, but he gave me a pack, told me to go, and so I did. Josh, he was stressed on the phone. Barely looked at Leo and told him to go. Once he left, he just carried on stressing for a bit. I asked him what was up, but he just snapped at me. It wasn't like him at all. The call? That was your dealer? Did he tell you to go after Leo? He said I had to. Well, I see one lad come out, and then another one came out, fo you know, followed him. Now, it barely got halfway up the street when the lad hit him from behind. Anyway, he got back up, and I couldn't see who had the knife at first, but then they started fighting for it. The next thing, they're rolling round on the floor. You know, like kids play fighting. But then, only one of them got up, and then he ran off. Now, I didn't want to get involved, but I, I had to dial 999. I mean... We had to speak to somebody, because, you know, we don't want decent people getting hurt. He pulled the knife. I didn't mean to. I just did what I had to do. You know, I couldn't move. You know, I thought this is what dying feels like. Josh never came back. I only knew what happened when the police knocked on the door. Well, we stayed inside until the police got there, because we couldn't be sure that that was the end of the fighting. But then I saw him treating him. I mean, he's just a boy. He's not much older than my grandson. Just another kid carrying a blade he didn't know how to use. Was it you who called Josh? <laughs> they let you in here and you want to play detective. OK, here's another question for you. What was your involvement in trafficking girls for the purpose of sexual exploitation? That's why girls are taking two other addresses, right? OK, Daniel, one last question for you today. What does the future look like for you? It looks all right. Thanks for asking. I'm going to use my time in here to gain some new skills, get myself a job, I suppose. Settle down. I'm pleased you're moving on. I spoke to a young man who said to me that being in the game was like living a lie. He said he looked ahead at the people that have been in it for years. And he said you can only get so far that it was the people higher up, the ones that nobody could talk to that were winning, that the police couldn't touch them, that it was the ones beneath them that were taking the fall, that they were using them. It's a good job that's not in your future, isn't it? You have to learn what's real, learn what's fake. Dealing, robbing your mates, none of that shit's real. Thanks, Josh. I'm sure what you're sharing will be helpful to someone. You did say something earlier that I know isn't true. Yeah? You said you were stupid. You're clearly not stupid. They knew what they were doing to trap you in, control you. Even Leo can see that. You've done things you shouldn't have done, no doubt. But stupid? I'm not having that. He's 11. Oh, he's a smashing lad. He's football mad. It's a shame he didn't come out on the Thursday because he comes here after school and then he stays for his tea. It sounds lovely. I'm sure he wouldn't get involved in anything like what you saw, but say he did, say he was being groomed or threatened, coming and going from a house late at night, involved in something he shouldn't be, would you want somebody to say something? But he wouldn't, he's a good lad. I'm sorry Julie, I know he probably wouldn't, but imagine somebody else's grandkid, someone from across town who doesn't know what their little boy that they love is involved in. All this time, you were watching, taking pictures, notes even, 
and you had it all for the police after the boy was stabbed. But you didn't know that was going to happen, did you? People coming and going, children late out, young girls sneaked into a house late at night. Did you not think of going to the police before then? But I don't want any trouble, do I? But yeah, if it was my grandson, I should have done something sooner really, shouldn't I? Grace, you've been so helpful today, thank you. I think you can see how someone like Josh gets involved like he did, even clearer than he did. Thanks. Like I said, it's all over around it. I have a little cousin, he's only nine, but I think I look at him and I think about like, what if he got pulled in, you know? And that's why understanding how it happens helps us to prevent it. I have got another question for you though, I hope you don't mind me asking. Yeah, sure. What were you doing at the trap houses? Well, drugs, obviously. Yeah, but you said your boyfriend took you places, but it seems to me like he wasn't around much himself. You said those places were disgusting. Why were you hanging out there? Were you on your own? Well, no, I was with his mates. Other man? Yeah, his mates. Grace, you've described to me really clearly how Josh and Leo were exploited. Have you spoken to anybody about your own situation? Dunno, like, who'd listen? I think you'd be surprised. Doing this research, you hear about people doing bad things to people that trusted them. But you also learn that there's really good people out there as well. People that really have your best interests at heart. People you can really trust. Yeah, I'm off down to the corner studio tomorrow to lay some tracks. The kit they've got is sick. I'm looking forward to hearing it. <laughs> Man can get listened to drill all the time. <laughs> it's, it's like I've been given a second chance. So I've got to take it, haven't I? You know, like a little bit more to the side, they said maybe I've been all right. But like a little bit more, it's like I've been dead. But yeah, like laying in hospital and gave me bare time to think about like, my priorities and stuff. I'm true, I'm stuck in this chair for the rest of my life, but like, I feel more free than I ever did before.